Yo, Marcus Scraper here. There's so many different investing options out there for retirement and not retirement. Um, when I'm getting money from a paycheck, should I put it all in my 401k? Should I distribute it evenly to a 401k, IRA, HSA, A, B, C, D, F, G? Like, what do I do with it? And is it best to just go with one mixture? Um, or is one better than the other? Are they all the same? Well, let's take a look at which ones you should be allocating your money in first. And why not make a tier list? We'll make a tier list from S, A, B, C, D. And by looking at this tier list, you can find out which ones you should be allocating first and prioritize the most over the other ones. This will be kind of like a cheat sheet. Well, let's get started. All right, so for our S categories, the first thing that you wanna make sure you take advantage of is if your employer has any matching for their 401k, take advantage fully of all the matching that they give you. So if your employer matches three, 4%, then make sure you contribute that three or 4% of your income so that you take full advantage of their matching because that's free money right there. So that would be an S tier. Another S tier, uh, not retirement related, but definitely contribute to your ESPP, Employee Stock Purchase Plan, if your employer offers one. So for example, the reason why an ESPP is so good is that when you make those contributions, when you get them back right away, you'll make at least 15% gains on those contributions, probably a significant amount more than that. And then you can transfer those funds directly into a Roth IRA or another brokerage account that you may have or another type of investment. So that's why it's definitely an S tier. So the next thing we want to focus on with our money is an HSA account. So if you have a high deductible health plan, then you can contribute to an HSA. And specifically for the S tier is the employer matching here. So definitely take advantage of employer matching if you have a high deductible plan that allows a HSA account. A few additional things about an HSA. Know that it's tax-free. So any money that you put into it is, is pre-taxed. And any money that you use on qualified medical expenses, uh, whenever you use that, it is, is also uh, tax exempt. So you have pre-tax and post-tax exempt. So it never gets taxed. So that's what's so great about that. And another thing to know, and why the next thing on our list is also uh, con actually contributing to your HSA personally. And so that might be kind of getting into the A tier list here, but it's upper a tier because the reason why it's so awesome to contribute your own money to an HSA account, again, just like medical expenses, you get it's pre tax when you put it in, but when you reach the age of 65, I believe, you don't have to use that money for only medical expenses. If you do use it on something that isn't a medical expense, you will be taxed on it, similar to a traditional 401k when you're taxed when you take the money out. And when, with that regards alone, it's just as good as a retirement account with the upside of if you use it for medical expenses, you're gonna have no tax or liability on either end. Now getting further into our A tier, and the next thing to do in the A tier would be to finishing off the limit of your 401k. So that's 19k for uh, 2019. Now to the B tier is to contribute to the Roth IRA and the limit for 2019 was 6,000. Equally as good if not even better than just contributing to a Roth IRA, especially if your employer makes it easy for you. There's something called the 401k after-tax contributions and what's so good about that is that you can contribute up to uh, 56,000 altogether and but the after-tax contributions is a fraction of the 56k that you're able to contribute in total, so it's 56k minus the 401k contribution limits, which is 19,000 for 2019, minus any employer matching that they might do. So if they match 5,000, that would be a total of 24,000 that you and your employer contributed. So 24,000 minus the 56,000 of the uh, limit for 2019 uh, will be $32,000. 
So you can contribute an extra $32,000 to an after-tax account within your 401k, but make sure that it automatically gets converted to Roth. And then after all that, uh, is an individual brokerage account. So definitely open one of those and put money in. It's going to yield a lot more than a savings account, especially if you have your emergency fund uh, all set already. So that's the tier list there. And let me know what you think. Is there something I completely missed in this list here? Or is there a disagreement? Do you, do you think a different item should be prioritized higher or lower? Let me know what your thoughts are there. And a reminder that I'm not a professional financial advisor. These videos are for your fun and entertainment purposes only. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe.